guys, Michelle here. Welcome to the Traveling Epicurean. I'm in one of my favorite kitchens, my dear friends, Irene and David. And today is going to be special because David's brother, Chef Mark, is back in town and he's going to be cooking with us today. This is Chef Mark, everybody. Hi, how is everybody doing out there? Uh, so what are you going to show us how to make today? Well, today I'm going to show you how to make chicken pot pie in a truly new and revolutionary way. Ooh, that sounds delicious. And you had another name for it? Torta di pollo? Torta di pollo, Ooh. which means a chicken tort or a chicken cake. Okay. And basically that's what we're going to make. Oh, that sounds delicious. And it's with layered tortillas. Correct. With the chicken and all the vegetables. Instead of having to make a pie crust and roll that out. Isn't that nice? It sounds like it's going to be simple to assemble as well. It is because so much of it is store-bought and the prep that you do is relatively simplistic. Very nice. So well, I am so excited about this. Why don't we show everybody what we have here, what we're going to need to make this. Sounds great. Okay. Okay, chef. Look at all these wonderful ingredients you have here. Well, first of all, these are strictly for decoration, but I do cook with flowers frequently, so you never know. So okay. I just thought I'd get that out of the way to okay. start with. And we're going to use one of my very favorite ingredients in the entire world, and, and that's heavy that? cream. Oh, mine too. No wonder Better get living so well. through heavy cream. It's my motto. <laughs> very good. Literally. That we are going to be using small assorted colored potatoes, Peruvian purple. Those are beautiful. Red bliss and whites. We're going to be using fresh broccoli, fresh cauliflower, fresh bell peppers, some slivered parsnip. Oh, I love parsnips. Some celery. Very nice. Some mushrooms and this is going to be an assortment of cremini mushrooms or basically our baby portobellos yes I and they're very much the same as a regular mushroom and if anybody is like put off by the fact that they want to wash a mushroom please do yourself the favor and don't do that yeah a damp paper paper towel does a great job damp paper towel is fine nothing is fine it's one of my beliefs that everybody should be eating a couple of tablespoons of dinner a week <laughs> just to stay healthy. I mean, That's it keeps right. your immune system off. The knife is extremely sharp. So we're going to take it to a steel. Okay. Just like that. A few strokes is fine. And then what I do is I skin the top of the mushroom in a rotating fashion. See how I'm rotating the mushroom up against the blade? I'm not actually twisting the blade until the very end. And what that's doing is it's systematically taking the peel off and it's leaving this beautiful pattern that will look like a turban hat when I'm done. Isn't that pretty? And it can be done quickly, but it will take you 4,000 mushrooms to master. Yes. So using a damp paper towel might be the other option that's much easier. But... Absolutely <laughs> is. But, but from a chef's From a chef's you know, standpoint, I just thought you'd like to see Absolutely. that this is one of the things that we use for garnish all the time. Isn't that pretty? And isn't that a pretty thing? That's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Actually. Now here's a little tip about using a knife. Most people go and pick up a knife like this, and that's very wrong, because when you use it, it can twist in your hand. You wanna bring your hand up so that it's balanced in your hand. Right at the edge there. And a finger on either side, so now you're in control of where it moves. Very nice, good and tip there, Sean. Then it rides along your finger with everything tucked behind it, like I'm going through this mushroom and like this. Guide you through the mushroom. And if the knife never bleeds your finger, it can't come back to cut you. Exactly. So it makes it so you can go like this and not even look at what you're doing. Very nice. Go ahead. Well, you know, I love this recipe because you're using a rotisserie chicken. Absolutely. Which is a dream for all of us who don't have the time to be baking a chicken and then going through the whole rigmarole of putting together this torch. Absolutely correct. That's wonderful. And the most important ingredient is the juice that collects in the bottom of it. So when you get that home, make sure you pour that off and reserve it. And that's like the gelatin, all that lovely yes, flavor. Yes, and all that great flavor. That's it's really so nice. a concentrated natural chicken stock that's so, so much better. don't throw that out. Never throw that away. <laughs> Never, okay. Three it if you don't use it for anything else. I love that's a great idea too. Just put it in a little baggie and put it in the freezer and you got it when you need it. Very nice. So now you're gonna be taking all the meat off of this. Yes I am and here. I'm gonna reserve the bones because I'm gonna make a homemade stock. Oh lovely. And this is the easiest way to break down a chicken. Just go in with your fingers. Okay. Right along the breastbone and put your thumb down so that it rides along the breast. Look, and how, look how the breast comes, comes right off. Absolutely. If you got out the bone. Instead of worrying about cutting it. Right, right. You don't need to worry about it. And then that. you can feel if there's any bones in there as well. Exactly, and that's what you're doing. Okay? 
And then you have your lovely chicken meat, so I'm going to go over to the other side, do the same thing. And look how clean I'll pick that bone. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay. Now we don't want the skin, we're just going for the meat, right? Correct. We're okay. going to use the skin to make the stock though, because okay. it has a caramelization on it. It certainly does. And a lot of flavors have, in there. Right. And caramelizing things is the key to adding flavors levels to yeah. your... The layers of flavors. Exactly. That we always hear talked about on all these cooking shows. Well, this is this is the key to doing it. Everything that you do, you want to caramelize in some way before you've added it. That's right. We even talk about it on this cooking show. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I would be remiss if I did not do that. That's right. So we're going to reserve that bone. And you can use, if you don't care for the thigh meat, that's fine. Save that for somebody that does I make chicken salad, thigh but meat, I think though. it's the moistest, it's most the, flavorful. It's very moist. It has the most flavor. So now how many years have you been chefing? Well, chef I have been chefing since I was a mere 14 years old. Oh my goodness. That's a long time. It's a long time. Yeah. I'm not as first. So when was the first thought of becoming a chef? Eight or nine. Really? Yes. I, I knew from very early from on. Right off the bat. I cooked with my grandmother, who was a fine cook. I cooked with my aunt, who was very worldly, traveled to Europe, had a very cosmopolitan sense of style and cuisine. Isn't that nice? That somebody and had just that big impression on picked, you. It, it took me. That's lovely. Well, and your mom must have been happy that... She had some hands in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> when she figured out that I actually knew how to use the KitchenAid mixer, yeah. it was from well, 1927. Then it was over for you. <laughs> she, never, she didn't want to do anything in that kitchen anymore. She's I don't like, blame her. It's on you, buddy. Absolutely. And by 13 or 14, I was having a dozen friends over and doing a formal sit down, Are sterling silver, the most china, roast duck dinners. And... Oh, my goodness. Where was I? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love duck. You were doing roast duck dinners at 14. At 14. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. So I love how you've just julienned all that chicken up. Right, so it's going to be ready for me when I need to go. Okay. And these are going to go in the layers of the tortillas. Correct. This will be one of the segments of the layers. So you, you said you're going to alternate the layers? Yes, vegetable, I Vegetable, chicken, and cheese. Correct. And then vegetable, and then back and forth. Exactly. So we're just going to saute up... These raw vegetables. Yes, but there's bit. a sp very specific order that you need to do that in. Okay. <laughs> okay, chef, tell us what we need to put in there first. The mushrooms. The mushrooms, really? In a dry pan. Okay. Very hot. Right, so well, what we're trying to do is sear them and capture that juice and concentrate it and concentrate it and give a nice caramelization to the outside of the mushrooms with this smoky, brown, woody, meaty flavor that you could actually use portobellos instead of chicken altogether and do it as a vegetarian pie. Spoken like a true chef. Okay, our pan is nice and smoking hot, so when I add those mushrooms, you hear this immediate searing sound. I love that searing sound. Listen, they're almost like they're whistling. Singing a little song. <laughs> That's beautiful. Now, you can start to see the color. That's and the smell is like roasting oh, these mushrooms. Isn't that nice? So it's a pan roast, but without oil. I wish everybody could smell how incredible it is. And I am going to be absolutely 1,000% decadent with these things in about a second. Oh my god. So I'm going to use an ingredient that not many people have in the kitchen. And it's called truffle salt. Truffle. Everybody knows how crazy I am about truffle oil. And I take five cups of salt yes. and a very small black truffle so it's not terribly expensive. You put it into a food processor and allow it to go until the little black specks that you see in the salt, that's the truffle. It's not pretty. But it aromatizes that salt so incredibly that it just smells like garlic and earthy and deli it's everything that you want a truffle to be. Absolutely. And a pinch of this goes a heck of a long way when it you season it. It certainly does. The flavor is just amazing. So, as we can see, look at this beautiful color that's starting to build up in the bottom of my pan. Of course. This is that caramelization that we were talking about, and we're building layers of flavor. Because every time you take the sugars in food and make it turn into caramel, it produces a number Mother. of small little chemicals that are highly beneficial to you as antioxidants, and they also are highly beneficial for flavor. Wonderful. Another layer of flavor. So now here... Um, just the smallest, that's probably about most of the salt I'm using for Tyler. Lovely. And at this point, 
we are going to kind of move the mushrooms over to one side in the pan. Okay. And we're going to add extra virgin. Well, you could use regular olive oil here. The extra virgin isn't as important over high heat because it loses its flavor quality when you heat it. Exactly. And our next step is to add our potatoes into this hot oil. And as you can see, look at like this first one. It's already crisp and cooked on the one side. You can see the color change, the translucency happens immediately. That's why I sliced them as thin as I have. Yeah. That all my ingredients are going to be warm. I'm going to take that chicken meat that I already did. And what I did in this big pot back here is I took the onion skins and the carrot bottoms and the celery parts that weren't great and a little bit of the parsnip and the chicken bones, and I covered it with water and brought it to a boil. Okay, great. And that's the stock that's that the we're stock using. That's the stock that I'm going to use. That's very nice. The parsnips are your next, along with your celery, chopped bell peppers. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of lemon zest, fresh lemon zest. Oh, isn't that nice? It That'll adds a really up nice flavors. fresh note. Shallots and our garlic. Oh, now that that onions, the shallots and garlic have gone in there, is that not something oh, just that's amazing? that's incredible. And look how gorgeous that is. I liked how you julienne the parsnips. Thank you very much. I like everything to have an attractive shape and a uniformity to its size so that it's not like clumsy when you're trying to take a bite of it. Yeah. So at this point, we're going to go into the final process, and that is where we deglaze our pan and make a quick sauce out of this whole thing. And what are you deglazing the pan with I'm there, Chef? I'm using sherry. And I'd like to take a moment here, turn my heat down, and discuss a little bit about sherry. Right. Okay, now. So we have some good cherries here. Are yeah, we, are we, we do. Tasting? Well, we have what I call cooking sherry for drunks and sherry for cooking and drinking. Okay. And there's a distinct difference. Now that's not an expensive, expensive sherry. No, I... we're talking $12 a bottle. That's, that's fabulous. This is what Taylor's is. And basically, it's just a forced flavored type of liquor. Okay. Four to wine, fortified with brandy, and they put it in a bottle, they call it sherry, and it has nothing to do with what real sherry is all about. I love sherry, though. I put it in my clam chowder, and it makes the amazing The world flavor. of difference. It does make a huge difference. And here I have a true Amontillado, which is a type of true sherry made in Spain. And it's unique because they fortified the wine so that it would keep when they took it in the ships to the New World. And they found that the rolling mechanism of the ship actually improved the age once it had added the brandy to their grapes. The rolling from the waves? Yes. Isn't that, I love all your stories that you have. I have a million Such of stories. Such history behind everything. Well, it's I'm, I'm a culinary student of America graduate. Yeah. And I studied with Chef Tim Ryan, who's now the president of the school. Oh, He's also the youngest master chef in the world. Oh my goodness. That's, that's something there. And I learned a whole lot from him. And I took, I learned to take my craft very seriously. Yeah. And to know but what I'm talking about. It is a serious craft, absolutely. Yeah, it is. There's a lot is. that goes into the culinary world. Absolutely. There's so a much lot of information. thought and, and information and theory behind just taking a whole bunch of stuff and putting it together. Yeah. Together. And, well, and knowing some of the history behind it helps you to remember all of this as well. Right, right? exactly. Now, now, we're going to deglaze this pan with not only our little shot, which we're also going to be able to taste. That smells so incredible. Now, here, I'd like you to taste the difference. Sure. And tell me if you can tell the difference. This is really nutty and complex, and this is kind of just sort of sweet and eh. There's no comparison whatsoever. This is like this is amazing. lemonade, and this is like yeah. our this real wine. Yeah, this flavor and complexity. Complexity. That's lovely. Oh. I could drink this for hours. <laughs> You're supposed to cook with it, Mark. <laughs> oh. Yes, that's correct. So I'm going to add a good bit of that. So that's about maybe a third, third of a of cup. Third of a cup. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> and truffle salt. Yeah, and truffle salt. You have to get the truffle salt. Can't forget the truffle salt. And what is that? We're going to add heavy cream. Heavy cream. Oh, you're killing me. <laughs> Please add the heavy cream. Well, not quite yet, but first we're going to add some of our chicken stock that we've created here. And we're going to add some frozen peas for this bright brilliance of color and a nice little pop and snap when you bite into it. 
So now you're really texturing things out. Look how gorgeous that is. Is that not just like That's a really, masterpiece? Really Why pretty. do you need anything else really to go with this? Yeah, you don't need anything else at all. Well, you know, when you first mentioned this recipe, I thought of enchiladas right. because of the tortillas. And then you mentioned the Swiss cheese, and I was thinking chicken cordon bleu. And it's everything. <laughs> and it's just everything, all your favorites, all in one. Wow, look at that simmering there. That looks incredible. So now we're going to do the final thing that everybody needs to do with the food before they proceed. And you need to season it properly, please. And I use a block of pink Himalayan well, and a small you, cheese chef. blocker. Oh my and goodness. And that's, that's how I use my, that's how I make salt. <laughs> Now that's a true chef right there. Oh my goodness. That's, a, that's your pet rock? That's my pet rock. Yeah, that's my favorite little pet rock. <laughs> I love that. That's so sweet. Oh, you're going to love this. Incredible, huh? I got to get the spoon. Yes, I need a spoon. I go through all the spoons in my drawer so quickly when I'm cooking. Small ingredient here. Okay. And this is called Berber spice. And what is Berber and it is spice? It's an Ethiopian type of curry. Oh. And it's very. Tunisian, Moroccan influence, so it's not like a, a really heavy curry. But you're giving it a little exotic flavor, right? Yeah, and they have all these great exotic things. So I'm adding like a quarter teaspoon of this. It's just, just a enough. little underlying flavor. Right. And you can smell the warmth of it coming up now. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. So it looks about ready to start layering. Yeah, we're ready to roll. And the chicken hair has been keeping warm. Yes. It's all heated up in this little bath of chicken stock. Wow, that's uh, Add a little chicken stock to the bottom so the it doesn't bottom. stick. Okay. Not over and over plate. Now, how about if we... Now, you don't warm have to, these. We don't have to. You can do it in microwave. We can do it in a microwave or put them in some foil and warm and them the in your oven. oven. Exactly. Okay, nice. Oven. Okay. So, so I'll help you with it. We're going to lay that down. <laughs> and we're going to bring our chicken meat over here. Okay. So we're going to put a layer of the chicken down. And then and you're going to do cheese. me a favor, a little bit of the grated cheese. And this is a combination of that Austrian farmhouse and the Conti cheese. The Conti cheese. And then we're going to put it there. And then we're going to come back and we're going to take our vegetable mix that we strained out of the juice and reserve the juice for. Isn't that gorgeous? So you're not letting the juice pour into there just no, yet? No, because I don't want to get it soggy. Okay. I want it to be... Just the vegetables. Just the vegetables, All right. right. And, wait for the food so that juice. and then another, another layer. Now we're back to get up. Yes. Now we're back to chicken. Okay. So I have to check sometimes. I get so And fast. you're just doing the cheese on um, the chicken. The chicken layer. layer, right. Okay. Because the vegetables are already moistened with the sock gotcha. and the chicken is kind of has an ability to dry out, so sure. the cheese kind of makes a creamy layer that's necessary. And cheese like heavy cream or butter makes everything better. better. <laughs> Anytime you're adding butter fat to your food, man, you're doing a wonderful thing. Just, all right, so what, can we just peek under there because I had a, the camera on you? Oh, so we got the vegetable layer it was the next layer. Right. Okay. And then we go back and to... And then we just alternate back and forth. Chicken. Very pretty. Cheese. Tortilla. And tortilla. And so you're pushing down on that a little yes, bit? Yes, a little bit. So I'm, I'm kind of making it structured. And, okay. and it, it pushes the vegetables and the chicken all the way to the edges. Okay. And it keeps it level. Very nice. So we do this and we stack this up 10 deep. Okay. Josie's back. She says, what's going on? And here, we're going to make our final sauce, and it's really fast to make, and it's called an a la minute sauce because it's made at the last minute in the pan, and it doesn't use a roux, which means it doesn't use flour, it doesn't use starch, it's going to be light and rich and decadent all at the same time, Isn't which is that what nice. you want your food to be. And here's that magic juice that we saved. Oh, from the bottom of the rotisserie chicken. Lots of flavor there. Isn't that nice? Yes. And what I've done here is I've taken the vegetables from the sauce and the little bit that I have left I can use in another dish. And I've kept the juices and the deglazing material, which is called the fond in a pan, F-O-N-D. Yes. Which means the base in French. All the flavors. All the flavors. So brown caramely goodness in the bottom of the pan is a must when you cook. I've taken chicken stock and added into that. We deglazed our vegetables previously with the sherry wine, so we're going to re-fortify it with some more. And then we're going to, over high heat, reduce this 
with some heavy cream. Oh, stop with the cream. <laughs> more cream, more, more cream. cream. More cream, more <laughs> cream. And when that reduces just a little bit, we're going to add in Swiss, uh, an Austrian farmer's cheese and a Comte cheese, which is also a Swiss cheese, but it's a finer grade, so it's a smoother kind of cheese. It's a great the other melting one's cheese. Great right? melting yeah. cheese. You can use it for uh, making raclette with, which is melting it on with hot stones and just scooping it onto bread. Oh, I love that. Typical French dish, yeah. really great. Um, and, and then the other one's really nutty and has it's really a nutty texture. and sharp and and really has a good texture that's so nice and so we're adding that to this sauce we're going to add that to this sauce and that's going to become the thickener so there's not a root at oh all oh my goodness can i just dive in there yeah just about to take a bath <laughs> okay all right <laughs> this is going to be awesome and you, as you can see here the bubbles in the pan are starting to become bigger which means that the cream is starting to become more of a percentage the butter fat is more of a percentage of the liquid this will allow the cheese to melt without becoming granular or breaking out like you see happen in some of your cheese sauces. Sure. So we have the rest of the Austrian farmer's cheese and the comp that I used in assembling the tort. And I had a little bit, little rosemary plant right outside Davis' back door. Isn't that nice? So I'm going to add a little bit of fresh rosemary oh, perfect. in here too. Because we have it. Oh. You just pour this over the top. Oh, how beautiful. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. So this becomes the sauce inside your chicken pot pie. Right. And now it flashes under the broiler. So you're not baking it, per se. I mean, you're just No, because it. everything was either at room temperature, the vegetables were hot and sauteed when I started. Yeah. And if you're getting rotisserie chicken, usually it's going to be a hot one. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm going to go in underneath it. I've turned everything off so I can set the plate down. Isn't go in. That pretty? And look at that, how it just comes out. Oh my goodness, it is so I didn't so use a spatula, pretty. it doesn't fall apart, it doesn't have any of that stuff going on. Thank you so much. Oh, it was my pleasure. It was so fun to meet you finally. I've heard so much and seen so many episodes. And I've been hearing so much about you from your brother David and how you love to cook as well. Yes. So to get this wonderful recipe from Chef Mark, go to thetravelingepicurean.com. Have a great week. Bon appetito. Bon appetito. Tutto a tavolo and mangiare. Ciao. Okay, that was awesome. <laughs> okay, Chef Mark, so you are not just talented in the kitchen, but you know how to play the piano, don't I you? I do. I do the piano, and I also love to do watercolor painting and stained glass work. Oh, my goodness. You're full of surprises. Regular Renaissance man. This is Gershwin's second concert prelude. with all your talents. I can't wait for you to come back into town, Chef Mark.